for AI founders today, um, it's kind of like guys on Tinder, right? The vast majority of guys don't get any matches and the 1% of guys get all the likes and all the matches. I think that's what's happening in the AI landscape today. The vast majority of AI companies are struggling to raise and the 1%, the open AI, the Netflix of the world, they're getting all the capital. Welcome to Gen AI Talks. The world today is a whole different place with AI. So we have a phenomenal opportunity to have a chat about what's going on directly here in Silicon Valley. So let me give you the floor to introduce yourself and then we'll talk a lot about today, where's the world going? So floor is yours. Cool, yeah, really great to have, um, you know, really, really great to join um, in this conversation today. Um, my name is Jenny, I'm a partner at Leonis Capital. Um, we are a research-driven flight investing in seed and pre-seed stage companies, primarily in Silicon Valley, and all the investments that we make are um, AI-native companies. And my background before Leonis is in AI research, actually. Um, I was an early employee at OpenAI and did a PhD at Columbia, um, focusing on uh, economics and LLMs. So, um, you know, started doing agent later research ahead of the curve. <laughs> well, you have a really unique view in this time in history. I mean, we are literally seeing sci-fi become real in front of our eyes. And so just when you look at these startup founders, I mean, these central early companies that are really ideas, what are you seeing happening today? Are like the way people building startups different fundamentally than they've been in the past? And what are you seeing maybe some good things you're seeing from these startup founders? Yeah, I think like a really big trend we're seeing um, in 2025 compared to like 2021 is that the number of people at a startup has really declined. Previously, when a company wants to build a product, they have to hire a lot of product managers, a lot of engineers, and sometimes like, you know, middle management and all that is gone today. A lot of companies are succeeding and they're generating tens of millions of revenue with only five people or 10 people. So we've definitely seen the startup organization flatten over the last four years. And all that is in large part due to AI because nowadays a single engineer is able to like generate three times as much code and they're able to become like, you know, at least twice or even like three times more efficient today with AI. And the one really strong trend that we're seeing today is that um, there is a very high number of AI startups that are founded by two engineers, so two technical mm -hmm. co-founders. Back in 2021, the usual profile for a founder is like a business CEO, right? Someone who's a PM or an operator, investor, MBA type who's a CEO and then like an engineer as a CTO. That profile has really changed in today's day and age. And now you're seeing like a PhD CTO, you know, um, math Olympiad guy as a CEO. Um, and the CTO is even more technical than the CEO, right? So you have like technical plus technical combinations instead of like business plus technical mm -hmm. combinations. The AI is the product. And that means you don't really need to have a you know sales team to sell the product, right? If we look at like the top 100 AI companies in our survey, um, very few of them are using top-down sales anymore. Almost all of them are bottoms up product adoption, including you look at Cursor, you look at you know consumer products like Perplexity, there really is no sales team. And even for companies that end up selling to enterprise, it usually happens when a you know, critical mass of people within the organization is already using the tool. And then the, you know, the team goes to the enterprise and says, hey, do you want to have an enterprise account to monitor everyone's usage, right? You're not directly selling to an enterprise anymore. And that means the need for a sales you know, person, background, CEO, or like a whole sales team, that, that whole thing is gone. As I think about like how a founder shows up and how they tell stories, like your point is really interesting is typically I would hire a sales team to put my story in front of folks. Versus now, if my product has really got the value, it's got a story it could tell itself, I let the story brew. And then I come in, like you mentioned, to the enterprise and say, hey, already I got 90% of your employees using my platform. Do you want to make sure you can monitor it? Like, yeah. That's a very compelling story to tell that's just fundamentally different. I think we're coming through waves here. I remember maybe it was before it was like you had the top-down sales team approach. PLG came up, so product-led growth. Everything was amazing. Everybody thought that was going to be the way. Then there was a little bit of hesitancy for a minute there. Like, no, still the business decisions are made at the top level, so things bubble up, but you still got to get a decision maker. But it sounds like we're back there, where PLG is king. Can you speak a little bit now to, like, how you've seen that materializing in the startup place? Yeah, I think today is like just PLG on steroids, right? Everything is PLG. I think these companies, their products are going viral on Twitter. A lot of founders are using TikTok as a distribution channel as well. So like everything is PLG in the age of AI. Very few people are using enterprise sales. And um, part of that is because there is an unusual amount of appetite for AI products, even in enterprises. These are like, you know, chief innovation officers and enterprises going out there and looking for AI 
AI, AI uh, products, they're not just like waiting and say, hey, someone come pitch me a sell yeah. product. They're like, hey, we need AI products to go out and automate our, our um, workflows internally. And it's really interesting because if you've been following like public market news or you know any sort of like general um, economic news, you're seeing that big companies are downsizing. What elements of the story do you see people like missing that commonly is a mistake that if they just knew that little thing, they could how to help them better you know, build their business faster? I think there's one thing that founders in Silicon Valley especially commonly mess up. I, I told you about like how fast these companies are going in terms of ARR, but I, you know, can't emphasize enough like how many founders really mess up on the ARR number calculation. A lot of founders will come to me and say, hey, I have $3 million of ARR, but it's actually like the highest number from a single day and they times that like 365, right? Mm -hmm. That's like called an annual run rate. That's not an annual recurring revenue. And they always like mess that up. And I hate to, you know, really dig into their financials and figure out a number is fake. You're not really talking about like an recurring revenue, you're talking about like, you know, if, you know, every day is a good day for the next 365 days, that's the amount of revenue you can achieve. I think that's the single biggest mistake that founders make. And I, I'd say like, 20%, maybe like, you know, 25% of founders that I talk to will exaggerate the ARR that way. And I think that's the biggest mistake that founders are making today. Do you, do you see that like we're in a renaissance? Are we in like a potential new boom? Where are we in the spectrum, I guess you'd say? Yeah, I actually made this analogy earlier today. I'm like, you know, for AI founders today, um, it's kind of like guys on Tinder, right? <laughs> the vast majority of guys don't get any matches and the 1% of guys get all the likes <laughs> and all the matches. I think that's what's happening in the AI landscape today. The vast majority of AI companies are struggling to raise and the 1%, the open AIs and anthropics of the world, they're getting all the capital. Yeah. And I think it's a very interesting thing because I saw this data from Carta showing that the um, C to Series A graduate graduation rate has declined from 30 to 40 percent down to 20 percent nowadays. Mm -hmm. And the bar for a Series A has gone from like 1 million ARR to 3 million ARR. Part of this core concept of like being able to unlock opportunity, like you said, was getting it in front of folks. So they're able to see this opportunity. And part of what I was sharing with the innovation loop is when people see something that's innovative, it goes viral on its own. They want to share it. They want to use it. So like there's no like force to push someone in that space. So with the way that like, you know, these companies are creating their campaigns and they're setting up their business, do you recommend that like as a founder, I should focus on that element of my business? Should I focus on like just getting the initial testers to use it? How much of it like they have it fully fleshed out, then they're running these campaigns or they have the idea and they're running these campaigns and letting the audience teach them? You want to have initial signs of product market fit before you use paid marketing. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is that paid marketing is very expensive and you're often like paying like $50 to acquire a customer and it may take you like six months to like recoup all the, you know, like investments you made into marketing, right? So I think, you know, you want to see like initial signs that like people want the product, people need it. And there's some initial like organic growth before you go out and do paid marketing. I kind of see paid marketing um, not as a way of like kickstarting the the campaign but as a way to like really accelerate it you have to have that acceleration movement already before you you know put some fuel to the fire jenny this has been amazing chat all right thank, thank you. you big ideas real tools bold moves that's what gen ai talks is all about don't miss what's next subscribe and explore more in our gen ai community